Hello everyone. Welcome to Instructive Constructive. This is a full length video where we discuss at length about secondary iris claw being done under topical anesthesia. I'm Dr. Nilesh Kumar. So the side pores are being made. These videos are at normal speed. If you want to see it fast, please do so from the YouTube controls. Now we are injecting the Phenokin Plus, no financial interest. It's a nice dilating agent. So as you can see, once I inject the Phenokin Plus, there's some amount of vitreous that prolapsed out from the uh, side port. I didn't want to do, use Visco because uh, by using Visco, it would have been ideal, but the uh, Phenokin would not have uh, gone at all places around the eye. This presentation is by Madhvi Nitralia. So after the Phenokin Plus, I inject Triumcelanone. So this stains the vitreous strands. So now we know what we have to operate on. Once the vitreous cutter is primed, now we are going to start infusion from the left hand and uh, start cutting the strands that are first prolapsing out from the side port. This is a post SICS patient. That patient was left awake after the rent has happened. So. Now what we are going to do is to do a complete anterior vitrectomy through pass plane, uh, through the uh, anterior root. I don't want to use the uh, pass planar root because I wanted to do an iris claw and uh, for iris claw I don't think uh, too much of uh, vitrectomy, uh, posterior vitrectomy is required uh, in my experience, in my limited experience. So the side port, through the side port the, uh, the cutter was not entering, I was not very sure why but I didn't want to traumatize the tissue too much so I thought I would enlarge the side port but I went uh, too ahead and uh, made it quite large. Uh, it was not uh, supposed to be that large. Now we are going to enter again through the side port from the right side and through the left hand I am going to enter into the uh, side port. Uh, I uh, did this because vitreous strand was coming out from the right hand side. So I first wanted to go beyond uh, below the wound and uh, get rid of all those uh, prolapsing vitreous before I move on to the side port on the left hand side. So as you can see when I am going near the uh, iris the cut rate becomes very low. It, it is around uh, 1000 sometimes 500 if I go uh, just below the uh, wound as I am doing right now you can see even it, if it is around 400 or 500 not more than that this is because I don't want to damage the iris because that's where our iris claw is going to rest if I cut the, the, the iris and the pupil becomes irregular then again I will have to abandon the procedure and go for an SFIUL which is much more traumatizing so uh, when I am in center I go full throttle the cut rate uh, that Quattra 700 gives me is around 5000 uh, with a nice uh, stability of uh, the chamber so uh, as you can see I am going uh, till mid uh, vitre vitreous cavity the fluttering indicates that the uh, PVD already uh, is induced in this eye and uh, I, I try to take out as much cortex as I can till the mid, uh, uh, mid, uh, cortical, mid cortical level at the vitreous cavity so now I move I change my hands I move the irrigation to the left hand the cutter on the right hand as you and you see uh, i am going below the pupil uh, here the cut rate is low when i go be below the iris but when i am in the center i go full throttle again and uh, after this i'll move to the strands that are again prolapsing from the side port at that time i'll have to be slow very slow so you see uh, I just pull it a little bit and cut it so that way the vitreous stand uh, the traction from the vitreous base uh, goes off and now I go below the pup uh, iris and cut the remaining uh, vitreous so the entire chamber is absolutely uh, free of the vitreous strand right now this is quite good amount of vitrectomy that we have done no, no, no tramslon is now prolapsing through the pupil replane, but we try to get as much uh, vitreous from the periphery as we can. Uh, 
so these machine machines uh, have uh, in the newer generation have quite a high uh, vitreous uh, cut rate so we don't have to worry about uh, creating an uh, atrogenic hole or a break in the periphery uh, and any person who is competent enough to uh, do a good phaco uh, and has a good control can do an anti vitrectomy and uh, uh implant an iris claw lens the iris claw lens procedure has become very easy with the retrofixated iris claw lens so now i am injecting uh, pilocarpin the infusion is on the some amount of uh, tramsulon that is again prolapsing the vitreous is coming so after installing uh, pilocarpin i again go through the side port to complete the vitrectomy so uh, we have to gingerly negotiate the area that is below the iris because uh, the the port needs to be up it can't be down but uh, you don't need to you can't damage the iris so that's how it is supposed to be now the infusion is on i am filling the cavity with viscoelastic and stopping the infusion i can see the, the visco is collapsing from the other end now the ac is filled with hpmc and now what we will do is move to the main wound the previous uh, sics wound so that we can insert the iris claw and complete the procedure so always put hpmc on the cornea this prevents the cornea from drying and uh, you don't need an assistant to keep putting drops each and every time on the cornea to keep it wet so now uh, what i do is blunt dissection it's only a 15 days old wound so not much of fibrosis is there i don't want to recreate a uh, a second uh, uh, cut on conjunctiva because there are fibrovascular adhesions these adhesions somehow if you clean cut them the bleeding uh, doesn't stop because the uh, the contraction in the fibrovascular tissue it keeps the blood vessel open but when you are doing it are uh, doing a blunt dissection after some time it tends to clot i might be wrong but in my experience this 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 is how it happens so with the uh, uh, crescent now i'll re explore that sics wound the previous surgeon had created so now the tunnel uh, has been entered and i'd like to re create the entry from the uh, wound that is done and now we are again refilling the chamber with hpmc so now the entire uh, eye is stored and we grab our iris claw forceps to get the iris claw in position so now trying to negotiate the iris claw through the main wound it won't go in horizontal fashion if it goes into horizontal fashion it becomes much easy i don't have to rotate the uh, iris claw otherwise it is it is a hassle to rotate from the vertical position to horizontal position and the horizontal position the preferred position for me to implant the iris claw so now again after inserting uh, there is not much space between iris claw and endothelium so i try to inject from side port but it is not uh, it is going below the iris claw and lifting it up so what i do is go through main wound to inject over it i got some space but again the side uh, the sinski hook is not uh, and is not entering into that space uh, if i try to negotiate then it might damage the corneal endothelium so what i do is try to go through the main wound create some tilt so that i get a a decent, a decent entry over the iris claw lens and now you can see i pushed it down on the iris and then rotated it into the position that is 0180 degree So again refill the AC with viscoelastic now I can go over the iris claw and with the uh, visco cannula only I can just rotate it now I am again entering and grasping the iris claw lens putting one haptic behind going through the side port I created this side port at this precise position just because I knew I will have to uh, 
hook the iris claw into the iris through at those position only so that's done the one haptic uh, has been uh, enclaved into the iris now again regrasping the iris claw going below with the second uh, haptic and again enclaving it so you just hear a, a tiny pop and you will know that the iris has got through that uh, through the crack and into the uh, haptic and it gets enclaved so after this i just take it out uh, i don't do pi uh, at the first setting the main reason is that i don't want high fema to happen in uh, in the first go and uh, uh, what i try to do is measure iop at the end of 2 weeks and then uh, create a pi a laser pi which is less traumatizing and more physiological i can do it at uh, at um, my preferred space apart from that uh, the myth that the pupils don't dilate uh, when you put iris claw uh, all of you can see that it it dilates when uh, when you are, when we are doing the hydro wash or the ia you can see it dilated to beyond 5.56 mm so that is decent enough pupil uh, to perform any procedure of your choice so it doesn't uh, hinder your retinal uh, tre retina treatment if anything uh, that person requires now we uh hydrate the main wound and uh, the nice uh, the previous agent had created a nice uh, tunnel so i don't need to suture the tunnel uh, as such what i am doing is removing the clot that clot prevents the uh, the addition of fibrovascular tissue uh, uh, to the underlying scleral bed and now we inject uh, the gentadexa and close the case so that's how it was done and this is the first post op day picture the patient was quite happy with the result and ended up with 612 vision at the end thank you so much for your consideration and